Jim, can you hear in the back? Yes. You got your hearing aid turned up? No. Okay, well that's probably part of the reason. <laughs> All right, we're going to swing into this uh, with uh, our procedure will be that each candidate, we have three candidates from uh, uh, the Board of Supervisors who are here, three candidates from the school board who are here. They have two to three minutes. Don Kramer, our Vice President, is keeping time. Uh, he'll give them a warning and then at uh, three minutes they're automatically shut down. Is that how that works? Uh, two and three. Okay. Then they'll uh, follow it at about 12, 15 or so. Uh, 30 minutes of questions and answers and we've got probably enough questions to last until two or three o'clock uh, we'll try to answer uh, get to those and, and get some quick answers about 245 till 1 we'll ask each candidate to make brief closing statements and each one was here early at 11:30. we'll ask them to uh, i think they're willing to stay and uh, talk with you afterwards that's an important development uh, the people who are here today uh, uh, first of all, the Board of Supervisors, District E, uh, Bill Brown, who's on the very end, on the right, uh, Brandon Root uh, is next to him, is the candidate uh, in District E, uh, Mary Biggs, Briggs, uh, who's candidate from uh, uh, District F, is not able to be here, she's teaching today, uh, she left her material, if you want to get in touch, her email and other information is in the back of the room, so pick that up. Uh, District G, which was the John Muffo seat, he's retiring. Uh, Matt Gabriel uh, was able to be here. He's in class today. His material and his wife is in the back. If you have any questions for Matt? Uh, but Bill Murray, uh, who's a candidate for District G, is here. Uh, on the left, uh, we have Wendell Jones, who's an uh, unopposed candidate in District E. Uh, Joe Ivers, who's the incumbent in District F and Barbara Skinner, uh, who is a candidate in District F. Sarah Wolseley uh, had a previous commitment and couldn't be here. So uh, with that, uh, the microphones are on the tables. Uh, candidates can simply turn that on, uh, take two to three minutes in an opening statement, and then we'll swing into the uh, open question and answer period. We'll start with uh, Bill Brown down at the far end. Good morning, AARP members, or shall I say good afternoon since it's 10 after 12. First thing I want to thank all of you all for sponsoring this candidate's forum. Uh, one of my favorite saying, sayings is, when we know better, we do better. This is a way that you guys can know better so that on November the 8th, you'll be able to do better with your vote. Uh, it's been an exciting year for the Board of Supervisors. Uh, I serve as vice chair. Uh, currently, I have about 39 years of public service experience. Uh, I served the town of Blacksburg for almost 36 years as a police officer rising through the ranks as police chief. We have had a couple challenging issues this uh, past year. One is dealing with public education our school construction uh, program. The other is continually cutbacks from the state, the reduction of funds to Montgomery County. And people often wonder, how come my taxes went up to Penny? Well, you shouldn't blame your board, you should blame the people in Richmond who keeps cutting and reducing the funds to the counties. Uh, I think we sent back about $408,000 this past year monies that were taken away from Montgomery County. We've worked hard to keep your taxes low. We have reduced the county staff by 30 people. Oh, I'm cut off for it. No, you're just working. Just still going. Okay. Seems like I've lost How it went on. Yeah. Okay. But uh, in the essence of time, uh, I'm going to be around a little bit after this to answer some questions. I guess I can yeah, it seemed like it just... Yeah, it did. It's blanking. Okay, you can hear. Uh, hello, my name is Brandon Roop. Uh, I'm 
Bill Brown's uh, loyal opposition. And I'd like to say good afternoon to you too. Um, I'm not going to get into politics right now, but I'll just introduce myself a little bit. I uh, was born and raised in northwestern uh, Montgomery County. I don't know if any of you know where North Run is. Uh, but I live back behind the, the church up there. In 1999, our house actually burnt down, so that actually might uh, pinpoint where that is. But uh, My grandparents, uh, I don't know if any of you know them, but they're Elwood and Diane Crefader. They lived in uh, Merrimack for a while. Uh, but I, right now I work at uh, Cinnabar's Gandalf Kennel. It's off Janelle Road, and uh, well, there's a bay between whether it's Christiansburg or Blacksburg. But um, I've been there for a while now, working in a small business, and I I know they're getting hit pretty hard by pretty much everything going in common. But uh, I enjoy it. I, I have to say, I was bit by a dog when I was a kid, and I'm terrified of them. But uh, luckily, my boss only. <laughs> Only lets uh, good dogs come in there. <laughs> uh, not much of a cat person. I probably might lose votes if I have any, but uh, it's great to be able to be here today. I, I probably shouldn't say this, but I'd rather be around older folks that know a bit more than what some of us young folks think we know. Uh, <laughs> but. Uh, as, as you probably figured out, uh, I have a bit of a cold, and I can hardly hear through my ears what I'm saying to you, so I apologize if at any point in time I sound like Charlie Brown's teacher. Uh, but if that's the case, just let me know. And again, thank you for letting me be here. Hello, my name is Bill Murray. I am a candidate for the Montgomery County Board of Supervisors District G. I'm a retired analytical chemist and community college instructor. I'm also a member of the AARP. I've got over 35 years of experience in education at all levels, community college and small universities, including K-12, which is probably more fun for the kids to work with. In government, I, I served, I was working in Northern Virginia, and I served on their Disability Advisory Committee the Special Education Advisory Committee and a group called the Northern Virginia Disability Advocates. So I was involved in local government quite extensively up there, including with budgeting problems that they encountered. Even though we were in advisory capacity, we had to make uh, recommendations as to expenditures. I also served with, um, I was a contractor with the U.S. Army Medical Corps in Silver Spring. We ran two labs for them. And there I learned the ins and outs of federal budgeting, which hasn't changed. And, uh, well, it's basically the federal government, for every rule they have against them, is something they've got another rule to get around. It. And that seems to trickle down to the local level as well. I moved to Blacksburg in 79 when <clears throat> Congressman Walker was in Congress. And I've moved away and back several times. This is my home now. I have experience in government in three other states, Maryland, Northern Virginia, Northern Virginia is another state, <laughs> and North Carolina, where I did some work. And, uh, the biggest issue right now, before the, the county, is education and the building of the new high school in Blacksburg and the two schools in Ryan. I'm opposed to raising taxes to do that. I think that there are other things that need to be looked at before we raise taxes. In my neighborhood, there are families that struggle to put food on the table. I think raising taxes would be taking food out of the mouth of babies, and that's just flat out wrong. And there are enough of us on fixed incomes that can't afford an increase in taxes or rents or any other incidents. So um, I'm opposed to it. I think we need to work to find another way to pay. The bonds have been, the order has gone out to issue the bonds. And that's a done deal. They can, they're going to have to pay for the school. We need the schools. Now we got to figure out how to pay for the bonds. Thank you. Keep that on that side. And, uh, we'll start uh, over here with Wendell Jones, uh, who's the incumbent uh, in District E. Wendell, if you take a few minutes and pass the microphone down the line. Okay. 
want to be sure. senior. Well, thank you all very much. I'll make the camera move also for the opportunity to speak. As you said, my name is Wendell Jones, a lifelong resident of the New River Valley, uh, born and raised in Gilaski County, 1979 graduate from Gilaski County High School. Uh, also went to New River, graduated, and also graduate from Radford University as well. Lived in the Prices Fork area. We uh, wanted to move closer and work for Moe. Moe, people ask how to pronounce that. It's, it's Moe, not Moe. And I uh, wanted to move closer to my work. And so I landed in the beautiful Prices Fork area. Have not regretted that one minute. Um, a great place to raise a family. And I have three kids. Uh, I have a daughter who is a sophomore at Virginia Tech. I have a son that is a senior at Blacksburg High School. And I have a uh, middle school, seventh grade, who is at Blacksburg Middle School. So for the past 14 months, I have been very involved as a parent in what's going on in the school. Um, on November the 29th, I will celebrate 25 years of wedded bliss to my wife, Amy, who is a teacher in the uh, Galaxy County School Division. Been there for several years over at Riverland Elementary. She's a special education teacher. And uh, I've had other family members who are currently involved in education. <clears throat> I'm finishing up my eighth year as a school board. And uh, why did I get involved in this? Everybody says, why are you doing this? One, because I wanted to learn. I have three kids in the system. I had three kids at the time. I wanted to learn. I wanted to understand if I could make an impact based on what I was hearing about what was going on in education. I was involved in the PTA and the PTO and decided I had I was encouraged to run based on that involvement and involvement. So I am running again because I want to see school construction capital projects come to a completion. I want to finish the business. Um, certainly I wish there was other people who were running against me. I think if we need more people involved in the system and more people who are willing to run but I'm willing to run for another four years and take on that and make sure we complete that project and do it the right way. Um, one quick story, not educationally related. On June 30th, I turned 50. I know it doesn't look that, but I did turn 50. <laughs> on June 30th. On July the 1st, guess what the first piece of email uh, mail was in my mailbox. <laughs> I can't tell the answer. It was my AARP application. Again, thank you all. Mr. Roberts. Thank you very much. First off, I want to thank the AARP for uh, the opportunity to join you this afternoon. And I also want to thank Barbara Skinner for um, throwing her hat in the ring because I agree with Wendell. I think we need competition, and this will keep me on my toes if nothing else. Um, again, I'm Joe Ivers, I'm Vice Chair of the Montgomery County School Board. Uh, I've over 40 years of uh, public school education experience. I've been a teacher, administrator, school, uh, school board, lifelong uh, child advocate. And along with being a teacher in the schools, I was a school counselor, assistant principal, guidance director, acting principal. I worked with personnel, hiring teachers and facility services personnel. I finished my public school career working and writing for an assistant superintendent in the superintendent schools. I was also a liaison working to resolve labor disputes between the facility services workers and the school administration. After retiring, I became director of church of my church adult education program, and the church had over 2,000 members. I am president of the school board vice chair and a four-year incumbent. What have I achieved? I've worked, I've worked exha exhaustively to keep the Blacksburg Middle School students in Blacksburg. Do you remember the mobile village that I had uh, pushed to no avail? It would look pretty appealing if we considered what's happening now. Our students will obviously be over in cross country for another few years. I feel I like contributed greatly in succeeding to have the uh, new Blacksburg High School uh, built instead of renovating the one we have. Obviously, uh, I was successful. Our budget has decreased over the last several years to the point where we are above 
<coughs> where we were nine or ten years ago. I've stated every year of the de decrease that we will not lay off teachers, and we have not, although programs have suffered greatly. Which brings me to the present and future. I am chair of the Montgomery County Public School Foundation. There is no doubt that this will be a way to recoup what we have lost. The foundation was laying dormant for several years when Phyllis Aldrin and I resurrected it. Now, as chair of the foundation, we are on the cusp of becoming a vibrant, active, income-producing uh, income mechanism where school people will have the opportunity to restart the programs they have lost. And I'm a member of the Montgomery County Public Schools Student Achievement Team. Our goal is to become a community of excellence <clears throat> to continue to hold high expectations for our uh, for our achievement and accountability. I'm also a member of the Montgomery County Social Justice and Diversity Community, uh, Committee. We, we must prepare our students for their lives, their community, and the world. I'm also a board member of the Southwest Virginia Governor's School. Personally, I am married. I'm done. I'm married. <laughs> Good afternoon, I'm Barbara Skinner, and thanks for those kind words, Mr. Ivers. It is a little difficult to jump into the race, um, but I am running for school board, District F, and I brought a handout today. There should be plenty at the back um, for everyone to have a copy. A little bit about my background. I grew up in Charlotte, North Carolina, and attended um, public schools there, grades 1 through 12. I earned degrees in Agricultural Pest Management, BS, from NC State University, and an MS from the University of California, Davis. And I worked for um, 10 years in agricultural research. I'm married um, to Stephen Skinner. We've been in Montgomery County for seven years. I have two children. Corey, my older son, attended all four years at Blacksburg High School. My younger son, Garrett, is now a 10th grader. And at, some time, at various times, I did homeschool both children before they went to high school. Um, in, re in recent years, I worked as a volunteer in churches and schools and for St. Francis Service Dogs. Um, I'm entering the school board race with a commitment to educational excellence, fiscal responsibility, and accountability to parents and to taxpayers. Um, beginning with the fiscal responsibility, these are tough times. Um, last year, I checked out what our long-term debt for the county is, and it was around $167 million. Every year we're paying $19 million, um, the county is for debt service. So we need to be very careful about how we spend money. A large part of our county revenue goes to school operation um, expenses, capital projects, and debt service. So um, although spending has taken up a lot of the board's time uh, this past year, we don't want to take our eyes off of academics. Um, and we need to be uh, sure, we need to be careful, for one thing, that we find the very best in curricula. When my younger son was in the third grade, um, they were using a math program called Everyday Math, and I was really concerned about it, did a lot of research. In fact, I did a whole, collected a whole book's worth of information about it. I was very concerned about the, the math curriculum that we were using. We've moved to, uh, to a new curriculum this year, and I've talked with the um, math coordinator. Hopefully it'll be better, but we just really need to be sure that uh, we have the very finest curricula that we can find. Um, continuing with academics, I am concerned that only 44% of our schools are making AYP. That's the adequate yearly improvement. Um, but beyond that, I think we need to look at how well are our SOL, standards of learning, how are they serving us in monitoring academic performance and um, progress. And in, on my handout, you'll see that I've compared SOL scores with NAEP scores. So I think I have to stop there, but please take a look at my handout and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you to each of the candidates. You ready to vote? If you are, we can just quit and go and leave now. But I think you'd like to hear the, their responses to some of these questions. We'll, let's call this a lightning round. Uh, so we'll ask for, this first question is, is one I think you can answer, I hope you'll answer briefly. You have one to two minutes on each of these. We'll start with uh, Mr. Root. 
since we started with Bill Brown last, we'll go through to Murray to uh, uh, Bill Brown down at the end. Do you favor letting the citizens of Montgomery County vote for debt via a bond issue referendum? Yes. Use the microphone, please. Yes. Okay, <laughs> Mr. Murray. Yes. All right, Bill Brown. Uh, no, for the simple reason. That's all right. Where's well, somehow we're having trouble shuffling these uh, microphones. Sorry. All right. You heard two two no's. Bill Brown. Two yes. Two yes. Two yes. Okay. Yeah, two yeses and two no's. Uh, no, because when you have issues as important as constructing schools and things like this, is that I don't think that we would ever get anything accomplished in this county. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Jones, you want to comment on that? Um, I believe it's going to be based on the issue in the bond referendum. I think it's, it's, you have to look at the issue, yes in some cases, no in some other cases. Um, I do think that um, what Mr. Uh, Brown stated is that um, you, sometimes you have to move forward and you have to accomplish some things and you have to make sure that you're moving in the right direction. Drivers. Unfortunately, it's a yes-no answer again. With the school situation, we needed to move as fast as possible. A bond referendum would not have helped us at all with delay, uh, possibly a year or so. So in that situation, the answer would be no. And as each situation come up, I would have to say, I would have to take a closer look at it. And I'm sorry for the wobbly, but again, with the schools, definitely no. Actually, I've never lived in a community where there wasn't a vote on issuance of bonds. So my answer is yes, I would favor a public vote. Okay, thank you. That, that was a lightning round, right? So that we're off to a good start. Let's reverse the order. Uh, Barbara Skinner, this question starts with you. Uh, give us a, a kind of concise answer. It's a little longer. How can the Board of Supervisors and the school board work more effectively together? Oh my, um, I've attended a lot of these meetings in the last months and sometimes it's like watching a ping pong match. You know, the board will come up with a request for funds, they'll send the request over to the uh, Board of Supervisors and I remember one case it was for redrawing um, the attendance lines, Board of Supervisors, oh well we can do that in-house, we don't need to you know, fund that with extra money. And so then it goes back, you know, and it goes back, and, oh, yes, well, we do need this for these reasons. So um, it, it is really um, a, a <laughs> difficult um, situation. I'm not sure exactly how it would be better to handle it, although I have wondered if perhaps the Board of Supervisors should handle exclusive all of the capital projects uh, funding and leave more of the uh, operating, I'm, I'm, am I going on too long? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> leave to okay. the operating expenses to the board. Drivers, we know the problem, don't describe the problem, uh, describe your answer. How can the boards work more effectively together? I, I think I've just been chastised. Um, <laughs> I, I don't go to the same meetings that Barbara, uh, Skinner goes to, because um, the meetings I've been to, the, 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 the last four years, the Board of Supervisors and the Board of Education have really worked very hard. We've met more, uh, we've had more meetings in the last four years than probably uh, in the previous eight years. I don't know, but anyway, it's been a lot of meetings. We um, have gotten a lot done, and I think that right now we're on task to even meet more and become closer as a unit so that we can get things done. All right, Mr. Jones. The current relationship between the Board of Supervisors and the Montgomery County School Board is the best it's ever been. Uh, when I came on board in, in uh, eight years ago, uh, there was some contention, and one of my roles as chair was to improve that relationship, and I will say that many people who've been around for a long time have said that the, the relationship has greatly improved. If we work very hard, I meet once a month with the county administrator, the superintendent, and the chairman of the board of supervisors to discuss issues. So we come to the and we are working very hard. We're going to continue to work on the relationship. Okay, thank you. The 
batteries are dying. Send out the battery police uh, from the community sense. Maybe they're done. All right, Mr. Murray, give the microphone a try. Effective uh, ideas. I think it would be great if Board of Supervisors work seamlessly together. And I think they are trying to do that. However, there have been minor disconnects with major impact on money. And the simplest answer, which may not be the correct answer, is that the Board of Supervisors should deal with capital expenditures and the school board should deal with the curriculum and education of the children. And uh, you can go on all day about it, I suppose. But I think they're trying to do a good job working together now. As uh, Mr. Jones said, they're best in years. And, but there's always room for improvement. Okay, uh, thank you. Perfect. Mr. Root. I hate to ask this, but can you repeat the question? Sure. The question is, how can the Board of Supervisors and the school board work more closely together? Uh, Give us two or three ideas. Well, I think they are doing better than what they had been. Uh, I can't knock it a whole lot, but uh, I, I will say, I don't know how to say this without maybe offending somebody. Um, let's say the school board would ask for funding. Uh, later on in the year, more appropriation, and let's say supervisors give it to them. If they don't spend it on what they ask or say they need it for, then I think maybe some tough love should be uh, should be had, and maybe they not get it somewhere on they say they need something because I mean, if, if there's no uh, trust sometimes between the supervisors and the school board, then uh, things are going to have to get a bit tough because of the money that we're the uh, issue with money we're having trouble with now. I mean, we're pushing, what are we pushing, a quarter billion dollars in, in debt uh, once these these uh, schools are funded. So I, I think that's, I think we've got to start, start looking at that a bit more closely. Mr. Brown, the question is, how can you work more effectively together? I believe uh, in the past three years that the school board and the Board of Supervisors have really enhanced the working relationship. Yes, there's questions between the board, the supervisors, and the school board. Uh, instead of rubber stamping things, there's a lot of mutual respect between both boards. When some money is, is requested, some additional funding is requested, yes, the board may question why. And that is, in my opinion, that is good business. It's not to criticize the board. It's not to micromanage the school board. It's just to question, why do you need this $88,000 for an example? Instead of rubber stamping and said that you can, uh, we're gonna approve it. A lot of things that has, has happened has drawn the two boards closer together. And one of these issues was the school construction, the falling of the gymnasium, and bringing parents and the school board together. Uh, the school board doesn't have a capital building program. They rely on the county for the uh, board for money. And some people don't understand. They say, well, the school board needs to live within the budget. If you don't have a capital building program within your budget, you can't build, you know, $124,000 worth of schools. Okay, next question. We'll start with Mr. Murray. What are your plans for the vacant school building across the road on Patrick Henry, known as the old, the oldest, newest old Blacksburg High School <laughs> uh, on Patrick Henry Drive? And if you want to comment at that time, also, uh, what do you want to do with the Prices Fork Elementary School, which is soon to be vacant? Let me start with Prices Fork. I think that students in Blacksburg can be kept in Blacksburg by putting the middle schoolers in the new Prices Fork Elementary and keep the Prices Fork kids in the Prices Fork School for the time being and save the cost of transporting them from Blacksburg to Christiansburg and giving them an identity with Blacksburg. Uh, and some have objected to that suggestion because claiming the facilities in the new elementary school are not big enough for middle school kids. Well, that may well be true, but then 
the suggestion is put trailers in there because you're busting up the trailers anyway over in Christiansburg. It's not, they're not all fitted in the old Christiansburg Middle School. And the savings would be substantial in doing it. Now for this building over here, it's, um, it's undergone a lot of, engineers have been in the building and have done destructive testing. I was in the building before it collapsed and it seemed safe and, and sound. I don't know what's happened since they've done their testing inside. I haven't been in. I've also heard people tell me that it's built over essentially a sinkhole. Well, and it's not entirely. The geological formation is limestone, which tends to dissolve with groundwater. And so the, the site is geologically unstable. So I'm not sure that you can do a whole lot with that site. Okay. Mr. Rue, what are your plans? Well, I, I, I guess for the, uh, the high school here, uh, I would just say we still have to see what we can get out of it. But that really kind of depends on, you know, more people going to that design because I, if I would get the uh, position, I mean, I have to look more closely at that. But uh, as for the Crisis Sports School, I know uh, mine of those community would like to see it function more as like a public utilities place. And uh, they've done some fundraising to, you know, help with the cost. But, you know, if, if they're able to actually maybe get lawyers or Lucy Monroe, as they talked about, uh, running space from it, you know, if somehow we can break even on the property, that's fine. But if not, I mean, we're going to have to do something with that too. And somehow sell it is, is all I can say. But I mean, okay. they, they just can't sit there like uh, the old middle school did in, uh, downtown. It was only 10 years, as I recall. Okay, uh, but my memory is short. Mr. Brown, what are your plans for the two vacant buildings? The plans, the current plans are uh, to sell Crisis Fork School, to sell the uh, old, 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 new Blacksburg High School, and <laughs> described it, as well as just like the site downtown. Uh, this was uh, a thing that helped us come to a, a conclusion in our building programs. The board and the school board agreed to sell off all the surplus property that the schools had. Uh, and the money, the proceeds from those sales would go to help pay down this $124,000 debt in the effort to keep taxes uh, as low as possible. Yes, people says, yeah, we got $15 million from the state. Well, that's not free money. That's $15 million that's interest-free that we have to pay back. So we have to look at all avenues in uh, getting some proceeds for the county so we don't have to put this big burden on our taxpayers' backs. Okay, thank you, Mr. Brown. Mr. Jones, you want to respond to that question? Vacant buildings across the street and prices for it. Well, first of all, just a quick education. The school board is required by law to surplus the school buildings if we deem it not having any educational use. And of course, you Blacksburg, old new Blacksburg, how you want to term it, we've obviously deemed that not having any educational use and we're going to sur surplus that back to the county. The same is true for Prices Fork. Building a new Prices Fork Elementary and looking at the growth in the various parts of the county, there certainly is no need educational use for Prices Fork Elementary, so we'll surplus that back to the county. Then it becomes an issue with the county and the town. Be, be very mindful that the county owns this property over here on Patrick Henry, but the town controls the zoning of it. And that was what was holding up the old Blacksburg Middle School property for years, was who, how are you going to zone it, and how are you going to zone it so people will want to invest in it. So we're required by law to turn it over and then let the county and the towns take care of it from that point on. We're here for education only. Okay, Mr. Ivers, what are your plans? Not just to pass it off Tell us if you've got a couple of ideas about what to do with these two buildings. Okay, first of all, um, this brings in the relationship that we have with the also the Blacksburg Town Council, which is also excellent. So we've been in the middle of two entities that have been cooperating completely with all of this uh, undertaking. 
Um, the high school needs to be zoned as high density as possible so that we can receive the tax break for it. We've got to get money and we've got to get a tax base from that property. So that's what I would do with it. As far as Price's Sport is concerned, the, the Blacksburg has nothing, Blacksburg, the city of Blacksburg has nothing to do with it. It's a, a county issue. And they must do the same thing. The county must look at that entity and do the same thing and zone it as high as possible so that we can receive as much money in the long run as possible. Not only the sale, but the taxes. Thank you. Ms. Kennedy. I just agree with uh, Mr. Brown and Mr. Ivers here that I'm glad that they agreed to sell the property and that we're trying to get as much as we can so that it can help alleviate some, some of the debt that we already have and then the additional debt we're taking on with this uh, issuance of the bonds. Okay, thank you. We're closing in on uh, time for closing statements. Let me, let me ask this question and ask your cooperation in answering it, if you will. We'll start with Mr. Brown. Uh, if elected, how can you bring about better cooperation between the Board of Supervisors and the Blacksburg interest through the Town Council and community groups like AART? Well, I've been the past three years and nine months working to enhance the relationship the relationships not only between the board and the town of Blackburn, the town of Christiansburg, the school board, uh, civic organizations and things uh, and so forth. Uh, one of my things that I frequently say in our board meetings, especially when it comes to the school board and the board of supervisors, is not our job as board supervisor members to micromanage the school board. Uh, the school board are elected officials and people elect them to make decisions. The same thing with the towns of Blacksburg and towns of Christiansburg. We have a, 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 a lot of uh, things that we're working on together. Why should the town of Blacksburg do something when the counties can do something when you can do it together and save the taxpayers money? Organizations such as the AARP is keeping citizens informed. Uh, what I'd like to do is to invite each and every one of you all to attend a board meeting. Uh, I know you probably look at it on channel two and, 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 and one name and when you have questions and things, I'm not saying that we have the right answer to every question that you have, but the only way you can learn as I have learned is to ask questions and it's pretty difficult whenever you a newly elected board member it takes you about two to three years to figure out what you're supposed to be doing before you can start doing it. So there's uh, many things, and, and reach out to your board members, reach out to your town council, you know, reach out to each other to try to gather a better understanding of what the issues may be or how we can enhance one another's work relationship. Okay, Mr. Root, give us two or three ideas that you have on this uh, pattern of cooperation between the county and the town. Well, I, I generally would agree with several things what Mr. Brown said, but uh, I, I hate to use this word because it's not exactly prudent, but uh, transparency or making yourself more available to, you know, a group like the AARP or, uh, you know, set up more meetings when you with the, the town of Blacksburg to get on the same page and know what is going on rather than, gee, I wonder what they're doing today. Uh, and I, don't know, I would also encourage you, as Brown said, to actually go to supervisor meetings, the school board meetings. Um, I try to get several. I'm actually running for the position and having a job that makes you work three to six or whenever you're drowned as part of the shift is not uh, exactly conducive to it. But uh, there's really hardly anybody that goes to these meetings. And I think uh, a bit more of people's voices would be better for the boards than not. OK, thank you. Mr. Murray. Well, I can't really disagree with colleagues here, but I would think that the town, the involvement of citizen groups and citizens at the, in the town government and the county government is lacking, to say the least. The last uh, supervisor's meeting was very, very poorly attended, and there was an item on the agenda to issue bonds for the school, for the school building. 
Well, nobody spoke. And I sat back, I didn't plan this because I didn't get a call to the agenda until just before the meeting. But it seems like when people show up to me, it's just for their special interests. We had uh, dog and cat people there at one, one meeting, and the dogs won. <laughs> but they were there because they had a, their interest was on the agenda and they wanted to be heard by the board. I think that citizen involvement is the key to where the town and the, and the county board working together. Is the, the amount of money that's being expended on this county building project for the schools is mind-boggling, to say the least. So I think that citizen involvement is, is critical at both the town and the county. It's frustrating it may be for some people to go there and think, well, it's a done deal anyway, so I'm not going to say anything. You need to know what's going on because there's a lot of information that comes through those meetings. And I've only been an attendee at the meeting. I don't have the privilege of having that like Mr. Brown has. It's all the details of the, all the issues the county is facing. So, um, okay, that's, that's thank you, Mr. Murray. All right, let's move on. Give me, give me two no ideas, Mr. Jones. How can there be better cooperation between the county and the town of Blacksburg citizens? Uh, first of all, I think having forums like this is an excellent way to get people together and get the two groups together. I mean, it's just basically getting setting aside time uh, to meet um, and have joint meetings. Uh, that's one of the goals that we have with the school board and the county is once a quarter to have a joint meeting to talk about issues. I think that that is up to the town and the county. Um, I think the other thing is, uh, as Mr. Roof said, uh, you hear the term transparency, but open communication. And we've worked very hard with the school board to open that up, and I would encourage both the towns and the county to continue that line. And attend meetings. Uh, they are there. They are poorly attended. They are very poorly attended when there's a lot of important issues out on the table. And, uh, you know, the only way you can make a change is being in attendance and being heard. Okay, Mr. Ivers. I'm uh, not going to repeat what uh, uh, Chairman Jones and, and uh, Vice Chair Mr. Brown have, have said, but um, I'm a hands-on person. And five years ago, I quickly found out that uh, there was 40% of poverty in this county. Um, and as a new school board member, I could see that uh, even more of the school and the children and the families. So in 2007, I became co-founder of a church group called Frames. Presbyterians at your service. This volunteer ecumenical group works with impoverished families in Montgomery County to provide home repairs and refurbishments to keep them warm, safe, comfortable, and dry. This is something that all of us can do. This is your avenue for getting involved. We have completed uh, and made families connections with over 100 jobs We've been in coordination efforts with the county agencies and churches. Um, we've also had a preliminary phase in starting a tutoring program in all the elementary schools in Blacksburg. This is where you and I can get involved. Okay, thank you. Scooter, wind us up. Okay, I too would love to see more people coming out for the meetings, and I have a couple of specific uh, suggestions. First off, at both meetings you have the opportunity for public address. But what I would like to see is the boards responding to these people. Um, you know, they could do so in the unfinished business part of the agenda, either at that meeting or the following meeting. So I'd like to see a response to people who come and take the time to go to the meetings and participate in public address. Another thing is I'd like to see some additions to the um, uh, school's website so that you can find out more about performance in our schools and hopefully more people will get involved in that. Uh, it actually takes a lot of time to, to try to pull out that information. I've spent a lot of time online doing that, going to the Virginia Department of Education website, and um, just like to have more information on our website to help people with that. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we're run, we've had a, a good round of several questions. We only have about 25 questions left. Uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, we'll go on answer, but maybe I can email these to you so you have a sense of what this group is thinking about, what their inquiries are, even though we haven't had the time. 
uh, in the limited uh, space we have here today. So I'll ask each candidate to uh, start us off uh, with a brief closing statement, and each one has agreed to uh, stick around at least for a few minutes and, uh, and visit. So uh, why don't we reverse this? Ms. Skinner, why don't we start with you? Make a brief uh, one-minute, uh, two-minute closing statement. Okay. Well, thanks again for coming out today. Um, it's a privilege to um, share with you some of my ideas about some changes maybe to the, the school board. And um, uh, please pick up my handout at the back. And I also have some more materials up here. Some of the things I'm specifically interested in is looking at um, how Virginia is performing as opposed to other states. And I have the nation's report card here. And um, I have some other information that looks at how our um, SOLs are comparing to the national standards and how that's working out for other states as well. So I'd love to uh, talk with you afterwards. And uh, thanks again for inviting me. Thank you, Ms. Skinner. Ms. Drivers, closing statement. There are some adults who have uh, very seldom gone to the halls of public schools yet feel both the right and the entitlement to dictate how to educate our children. <clears throat> These same individuals have never spent a minute or a little over a year in a crowded classroom comprised of children with varying degrees of interest in educating themselves. They're the same ones who demand perfection while simultaneously cut our, or eliminate already scarce resources. For the last four years, I have welcomed accountability of our schools and the system, but accountability measures must be both fair and realistic, and we must have adequate resources to accomplish this mission. No Child Left Behind is a great example of what I'm talking about. We are mandated to reach perfection of every child by 2014. This is a myopic focus on mastery of standard testings, and of course, it's unfunded and it's a failure. The future of Montgomery County Public Schools and the New River Valley is direct directly linked to the uh, success of our school system. I will continue to fight more realistically for accountability measures and more adequate funding so your students can reach their full potential and become successful Valley Global citizens. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ivers. Closing statement, Mr. Jones. Thank you. Go. Quick issues. Fiscal responsibility. I've been through eight budget sessions. We squeeze every penny we can out of what we're given. The state and the federal government continue to hand down unfunded mandates to you. Okay, so you can go to the board of supervisors and you come to us and say, you're not spending our money wisely. Well, you need to go to Richmond and tell those folks. You need to tell the representatives in this area, how the state and delegates, all of them, we are very physical responsible, and we, it's probably one of the most difficult jobs we have as a school board member, and it's countless hours by our board looking at every nickel we can spend. I know, because I also know from a teacher standpoint, when I watch my wife invest in supplies she needs for her kids, and she's a special education teacher, because the other school divisions are squeezing every penny they can. So we get some complaints because of high salaries. Well, some of the high salaries are across the state and across every division, and you pay what you can for what you're going to get. If you want to play in the minor leagues or if you want to play in the major leagues, testing. I do not believe in high stakes testing. How well you score on a test does not indicate whether you've learned that material or not. How well did you learn that material? I can, I've got kids who can memorize things right there. But did they truly, critically learn? Can they think? Can they calculate percentages in their head? No. They have to pull out their cell phone. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Uh, Mr. Murrow, why don't you give us your closing statement as we go across the table. Um, well, I want to address <laughs> spending, trying to give it some perspective. In the next year, the school the schools are planning to spend $14.5 million on new furniture for the new schools, which is certainly great, but they had furniture for the schools that they had since sold, 
I don't know what it was sold for. Uh, they currently spend two million a year to bus the BMS kids from Blacksburg to Christiansburg. I believe that needs to be readdressed and keep everybody in Blacksburg. There is about 1.4 million spent each year on paying the health insurance premium for teachers. I'm not yet. That's a good idea, and I certainly would encourage it if we had the money, but we don't. There's another 1.4 million that's spent on health insurance premium for part timers. Great idea. We have it, but we don't. And those are two areas where there are going to be some tough decisions in the future. That total is 19 and a half million dollars. We build a new courthouse for for that amount. So we need to, in the future, with the county infrastructure, we need to take our attention off of funding, throwing all the county money into the schools because it's just not realistic. There's other issues facing the county that we're either going to have to go into more debt, we have to address. Um, and this, I've been in the schools and I've seen children in poorer parts of the county being sent home with food at the end of the day. So there are families struggling very hard to make ends meet in this county and to raise taxes to fund all this uh, very aggressive capital building campaign. I think it's just wrong. I agree with Ms. Ivers about NCLB. It's very controversial. It's testing and there's questions as to the validity of the testing. There are many... Uh, Thank you, Mr. Murray. Mr. Ruth, your closing statement, please. Well, I'll have a different closing statement, uh, but I just want to again press upon you that it's incumbent for every one of us to really go to these meetings. Either one, maybe you pick one, or maybe your friend picks the other. But you know, it's maybe Don or Helen go to uh, the school board meeting, or I think that that's Larry. Sorry, I'm blind as a bat. Maybe Larry goes to the supervisor meeting. Uh, but I mean. The only way the government is going to do what you want it to do is if you get more active and go to the meetings or write the, your supervisor or somebody, and that goes for all levels. But uh, I just want to add another thing. Uh, most of the people that I talk to when I go and knock doors, uh, it's like, well, what are you going to do about taxes? Are, are you going to raise them? Are you going to lower them? Or are you going to leave them as they are? It's like, you know, the part of Montgomery County that I live in is mostly lower income and fixed income people like yourselves and that sometimes that's you know one and the same uh, but I mean I have pledged not to raise any property taxes whatsoever uh, I think some of this should be looked deeper into to maybe make some cuts uh, you know not not outrageous but we there's got to be some other ways we can do this besides hey we've got a problem let's uh, raise some taxes Okay, thank you, Mr. Roo. Closing statement, Bill Brown. Again, I'm Bill Brown. I'm running for re-election for District E. And two of my priorities have been public safety and public education. Uh, I think we have to have a safe environment to educate our children in. Uh, another thing is that Montgomery, District E, that Brandon, my opponent, was talking about, it's a very diverse district economically. We have people who live in that district who do not have two nipples to rub together, and we have people who live in that district who live in the three and one thousand dollar homes. I think some way there should be a, a, a work toward a balance, a balance between the haves and the have-nots uh, when we come to funding uh, for this county. Uh, and so we don't want to finish off the have, have nots and make the haves happy. Somewhere in the middle, there's some middle ground that I think I, as a board member, can help the board of supervisors find. You may not know this, but like when it comes to tax dollars, it takes about a million seven to run your volunteer rescue squads throughout the county. You know, it takes about a million four to run the green boxes with, within the county. And so those are, are, are two things that you can touch. You can see your tax dollars spent on. Uh, the state done a whammy on us last year, the inline duty benefits, which the state has always paid. They didn't pay this year. They said it's up to the localities. You've got to pay this for now. 
Another thing that the state's trying to do, they're trying to push secondary road maintenance to the counties. Can you imagine Mon Montgomery County spending about $50 million to hire employees to buy tractors, trucks, and road graders and paving equipment? We are really opposed to any kind of uh, responsibility pushed back to the counties that the state has been uh, responsible for. Mr. Brown, that sounds like a good ending point. Uh, okay, for everybody that's here, write down this date, Tuesday, October 18th, same place, same time, different set of questions for the Blacksburg Town Council candidates. So this is an important election, both in the county and in the town, and they're all going to be here on October 18th, and I hope you'll uh, return again and be with us. Uh, thank you to all of the candidates. President John, uh, before you leave, the big event.